You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Lindy, your host, and I have a good friend of mine here, someone who's very involved in Brockton. Uh, return visit. Uh, we haven't counted all the segments yet, Lynn. We're in the 500s now, and you've probably been in 100 of them, I've got to say. I think. Good to see you, okay, Mike. Okay, good to see you. So you are going to promote, uh, we're going to start with one event and then we'll switch gears and go to another one. Um, but we're going to talk about Frederick Douglass reading. That's right. So the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association, every year, through the generosity of Mass Humanities, we sponsor a public out loud reading of Frederick Douglass's speech, What to the Slave is the Fourth of July? Douglas gave the speech in 1852. Now, you remember, he was born in 1818. Mm -hmm. He lived in New Bedford starting in 1838. He lived in Lynn, Massachusetts in about 1841, and that's when he got the job with the um, Massachusetts abolitionists giving speeches. So by 1852, when he gave this speech, he had been at it for quite a number of years. So it was a group of 500 abolitionists, and he basically said it's kind of ironic that we are celebrating the independence of the United States of America, and I am an enslaved man, mm. a man in fetters, yeah. who is giving this speech. And so Mass Humanities funds a number of cities and towns across Massachusetts to read the speech out loud to remind us that we still have to work on issues of equality, social justice, freedom, and never to give up. That's what Frederick Douglass ta taught us, don't give up. And we're doing that in Frederick Douglass Park, right? So we're doing it in the community garden. If you use a GPS, it's 95 Frederick Douglass with two S's, Frederick Douglass Avenue. If you know Brockton, it's right in back of Messiah Baptist Church and the Firestone Car Care Center. We have it on a Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. So it's Sunday, June 30th, just before the 4th of July at 4 o'clock. So we set up um, chairs and we invite people to either spontaneously stand up and read a paragraph or what we do in Brockton, which is completely different than anyone else, is we ask people if they would like to pick a paragraph and translate it into the language of their ancestors to honor their ancestors who came to this country as immigrants and fought for the same rights, they can do that. They can hosey, remember in school you'd sure. hoseyed something? Yeah. So they can hosey a paragraph, translate it, and then in between the English paragraphs we have a variety of languages. Well, I enjoy reading. I just wish I could do it in another language. My, my dad spoke eight languages. He's, mm -hmm. His undergraduate degree was Romance languages, so he spoke five of them. His native was Spanish, and then he knew English, Hebrew, and Yiddish. Now, Dad would have still, at 90, still been able to do that sure. before he passed, but I admire anybody that speaks another language. I tell all of my students in school, you know what, you have one up on me because you speak another language, and it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's gonna help you in, in the world in the world of work and in the in, in life in right, general. Right. And Brockton is such a diverse community that we have no problem with a lot of the languages because I don't even know how many are in Brockton that are spoken, but there are a lot. I think the last number I heard, maybe through the school department, was 93. Okay. I'm not sure. So the way that this works is we just gather in the garden, bring a chair if you can, one of those fold-out chairs, Willie Wilson, the former history teacher at Brockton High, sets the stage, and then we say, who would like to come up and read paragraph one, paragraph two, and then maybe somebody like Charlo Lucien has chosen paragraph three to translate into Haitian Creole, mm -hmm. and he would read, and then maybe somebody from Criola Sunidas would translate something into Cape Verdean Creole. We had Haitian Creole, Cape Verdean Creole, French, Italian, Lithuanian, Polish, Mandarin Chinese, Gaelic. I don't remember all of them, right. um, but people read in different Lithuanian. languages. John, Lithuanian. John did yep, that. Yep, that's absolutely right. So Mass Humanities is really impressed 
with the unique way that Brockton does it. You know, Boston does it, a lot of the big cities, but we're the only ones that do it in multiple languages, so they're sending a documentary film crew right. um, this time to sort of record, even though you guys do a great job recording it, they want to do some snippets to make it part of a bigger story. So you come to the garden at 4 o'clock on June 30th, settle yourself in, if you want to stand up and spontaneously read, you can. If you want to just follow on, you can. And then when we get to the end of the 45 paragraphs, we sort of have a general conversation in the garden about what the speech means, how it impacts you. So your dad, for example, fought for freedom for everyone around the world. And Absolutely. so you honored him by reading. And then, because, of course, my life centers around food, um, we have pie with real whipped cream. And... Uh not supposed to have it, but I'm going to have it. I'll make an exception. That'll be my cheat day. So it's also very appropriate because it's in Frederick Douglass Garden, and it's on Frederick Douglass Avenue, and it's down the street from where the Liberty Tree used to stand, and this little sprouting's from the tree, and Frederick Douglass did indeed come to Brock. He did. He came and he spoke there along with William Lloyd Garrison, along with Amelia Bluma, along with a woman who was a doctor in the um, Civil War. And, and you know, um, one of the famous paintings that we have in City Hall is a slave cowering in the darkness, looking out and seeing a fire in the woods surrounded by slave catchers and their dogs. Mm. So even in our city hall, we talk a little bit about the, um, the, the struggle. And in the Douglas Garden itself, we talk about how Douglas connects us. He served as minister to Haiti. When he lived in New Bedford, he worked with Cape Verdean shipbuilders. He went to Ireland and stood next to the great Daniel O'Connell to fight for Irish rights. He supported Susan B. Anthony and women. His two sons were soldiers, and they served in the famous Massachusetts 54th yeah. uh, Regiment. So he ties us together in a number of ways, and that's why we read in different languages, too, to say he's still tying us together. Well, I think it's one of my favorite events. It's also in the month of June, mm -hmm. before it gets to be the 4th of July, and it gets all complicated with vacations and schedules, and I'm looking forward to it. it You've got to go to it. BCA will be there to capture it in the documentary, mm -hmm. but you've got to go and experience it. Absolutely. I think it's a wonderful event. I thank you and the group for doing it, and we're glad to promote it on Greater Broadway. Thanks. We'll see you June 30th. Sounds great. Thank Thanks, you. Mark. Thank you. So June 30th, 4 o'clock, Frederick Douglass Garden, the reading Frederick Douglass together. You're watching Greater Brockton. Thank you for joining us.